After a stroll around the town of Springbok, we set off for the border crossing into Namibia. How true that sign was. The crossing at Noordover was amazing. Within a few minutes, we were back on the road, heading for our overnight stop at I-Ice. Eye Ice, which means burning water in the local Nama language, is a resort set in a sulfurous hot spring. So here we are once again, <laughs> batting along in Africa. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my look at that. Is this, this is a welcome to Namibia, is that well, That's correct, yes. Yeah. Thank you, cheers. <laughs> can I just point out, it's tough in Namibia. I can see that, very tough, yeah. And uh, Simon, what can you say about that lovely road we just ridden on? 73 kilometers of dirt. Um, I need to let the tire pressure down a little bit. We did well. And I don't like the... Yeah, that's All a my terrible. things are kind of... <laughs> that, we'll, we'll send this to your dentist, he'll be happy. <laughs> and Gavin, what's it like doing 180 on those roads? <laughs> <laughs> and the good roads. Fantastic. I hope they stay like this the whole way. Yeah. Then we are going for a good ride. That mud looked a little bit daunting as well. It was here. Yeah, true. With a tummy full of beer, we went for a walk around a beautiful resort. Where else in the world can you find an outdoor theatre surrounded by mountains? The water gushes out of the spring at 60 degrees Celsius. Simon's gone off for a shit. He's got chipper guts. <laughs> cool bugger. And we just met the, the Holland couple. What are their names? Lucy and... I don't know, Big Moustache. Lucy and Moustache. Yeah. Lovely people. Travelled all over the world, giving up work and living their dream. Like we trying to do. Yeah. The back door of our rooms led directly into these hot spring bars. If you couldn't find Simon, this is where to start your search. That evening, we were treated to the most magnificent dinner, compliments of Simon. We woke up to the most incredible view. 
Today was a short ride to Fish River Canyon and later that afternoon we are going to meet up with Stuart. As we approached the Fish River, we could see the far side of the canyon and some of us tried everything to get an early peep of what we were going to see. Not even wild horses could keep us away. First River Canyon. Quite beautiful, Gavin. We spent a few hours looking over the vast canyon and then decided it was time for lunch. A few kilometers outside the canyon was a place called Cannon Roadhouse. They had the best collection of vintage cars we had ever seen. The owners also have a good sense of humour. This is something you should see. This is the Jets. Yes! Howard and Simon wanted to stay at Cannon Roadhouse for the night. I decided to join Stuart, so I rode back 25 kilometers to Canyon Lodge, where Stuart had already checked in. It was good to see Stuart again, so we decided to celebrate the only way we know how, over a few beers.
straight after breakfast, Stuart and I packed up and rode to Cannon Roadhouse to meet Howard and Simon. We filled our tanks at the pumps, which was under a tree. Due to heavy rains, most of the dirt roads were closed, so we were forced to make several detours. As you can see, we were quite pleased to be on the tar roads. We had been diverted so many times that we had to check our bearings to find a way to Hamra housing. At Bethany, while filling our tanks, one of us had some fun with the locals. We reached our hotel in Halmerhausen by early afternoon. Simon waited by the bikes while we went to check if there were any rooms available. If not, we were going to camp. Luckily it was out of season, so there were rooms available. Howard chose to camp as he can sleep anywhere. We spent the afternoon relaxing around the hotel. If we knew what tomorrow was going to bring, we would have relaxed a little more. After a good meal and plenty beers, we handed out the pink shirt to Simon as he battled on the dirt roads. Another beautiful day in Namibia. Simon was enjoying his new shirt as it was clean and did not smell of sweat and mud like the rest of us. While we were getting ready for the next leg of our journey, we were all full of jokes and smiles. Little did we know what was waiting for us out there. We were enjoying the scenery and having a great time until we came up on our first obstacle, a small river crossing, the first of many.
Simon was not too comfortable in the dirt, so I rode his bike through the crossings while he manned the camera. During the day, the roads went from bad to worse, with the road surface changing from gravel to sand to very loose stones. There were also numerous river crossings. Sand traps were hidden around every corner. Simon decided to take a closer look at this one. Luckily he wasn't hurt and there was no damage done to the bike. The scenery along the way kept changing and as we started to climb into the mountains, Simon decided he should stop again, but not to admire the view. This time Simon fell hard and did some damage to the almost indestructible panniers. Luckily he again escaped injury. It was early afternoon when we finally reached the little town of Better. We had only covered 100 kilometers, which was less than halfway. At this stage, we were wondering what time we were going to reach Sesrim, our overnight stop. There was no letting up of bad roads, and this punishment carried on all day. It was tiring work, so we made several stops to admire the landscape and wildlife. This time it was Stuart's turn to catch a wake-up call. A huge patch of soft sand caught Stuart by surprise, throwing him from side to side across the road. Luckily Stuart managed to save it, which impressed Howard, who was riding closely behind. The sun was setting quickly and we still had 30 kilometers to go. It was slow riding and it was doubtful if we were going to get to our campsite before nightfall and there were still a few surprises along the way. We 
we reached their stream as it was getting dark, so we quickly pitched our tents. As you can see, there's one buggered up pallion. How are we? How are you going to do it, bud? I need some more hands in. With no tools to repair Simon's pannier, how did to make a plan by using bits of wood, rocks, straps and riding boots? We also used the weight of the big beamer to pull the strong aluminium pannier sides back into shape. After all the excitement, we settled down to a bra and a few beers. Of course, there was the odd chirp. I was also the one that said to you, slow down, Stuart, there's a <laughs> dangerous part here. And you thought I said, speed up. No, but uh, I think your sign language is uh, I said that. I said that. You said what? I said that. Is stop, that that? stop, stop, yeah. I, know, I actually thought you were taking a picture of me coming past. Uh, is that why you went past? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the camera's off. I thought I'd better go past with a, with a, with a bit of style. Because all of a sudden I realised I was the deepest. <laughs> I was a tucker deep shit, let me just tell you. You mean you were in flying deep shit? I was in flying deep shit, but let yeah. me tell you something. Some of the training in the varsity, uh, the training I've had in the varsity group does work. I think you should just, on this short interview, you should say thanks to Roger Skeffer for the training he gave you. And, and because I think. And old John Briscoe. And John Briscoe, because I think they I saved your life today. Old what, about, your dad with the mm. what about me? Oh, you as well? Yeah. Did I put you through some shit you <laughs> Yeah, you put me through more shit than... You know, in fact, I've got to say this well, it's on the fucking camera. No! Uh, no this, this is this flying, this, eh? This, 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 is a, this is a family program. Yeah, well, there's editing that takes place. Mm. <laughs> this way. Oh, Pigsy is right. Whatever he says, take it with not one, two pinches of salt. Yeah. But I must say, you, you saved it. I was very impressed with your save. It was amazing. Oh, that's um, and you have earned the pink t-shirt for the day. Oh. Hold on, Stuart. Hold on. Hold on. It's something to earn it. You really deserve that. It's something to earn it. <laughs> 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 Today you broke me, oh, guys. Charlie, tell us about your day, man. Today was a bad day. Today was a bad day. But you made it to the end. Today was like riding on Dudley Sultan's beach. 
it's like shingle and sand and just horrid. And I tried to ride it nice and I couldn't. And I wanted it to end after about 10 kilometers. Which you get 250. And it didn't end after about 200 kilometers. But you kept on. Right. And I can't do many days like this. But it was good though. I mean, here we are. I had two balls today, one of which was medium and the other one would hit me a bit and there's, there's damaged the bike. A little bit of damage. I yeah. don't want too many of them. Yeah. Now that'll lead to the, our next presentation. Oh, oh. Uh, it's Gavin, I think we've got on the screen there. Yeah, that's me. He's the next recipient of the pink t shirt for today for choosing a shit yeah. to ride. Uh, fucking <laughs> terrible <laughs> right. Yeah. It wasn't me. Just a little trouble you were going to say. We would have gone in the bottom row. He said, he said, Howard, and you will go first. He said, it's only 300 k's. Yeah. We can Easy. sleep in, yeah. we can take our time, we can have a late breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I still want to know what's the problem with the road. <laughs> <laughs> This one's got no printing on it. <laughs> Inside out. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, yeah, I think I think the three pinkies must. Come on, where's yours? Uh, where's yours? I just shot it there. Well done, bro. You make me you and good family in the farm by the running. What's it like doing 180 on those roads? First River Canyon. Well done, good.